All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School, and what we're going to do today, we're going to learn how to paint a brand new bumper cover. Now, I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but there's a lot of tech tips that you'll learn in this video that's going to give you an angle on the proper way to prep the bumper cover, the proper way to spray the paint on, and the proper way to, to get it all done from start to finish. Let's go ahead and get the bumper cover out. I'm going to tell you what we're working on here and see what we got. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. All right, the first thing you're going to need is a good stand. Now, this is called a bumper stand right here. This is a bumper cover stand. And it's specifically made for bumper covers, but I use it for other parts. Uh, this is a pretty old one. I've had it a very long time. You can see on the bottom down here where the legs have rusted and rotted, and I had to repair it and fix it because I believe that uh, if it still works, it's still good. So um, what we're going to do is take our bumper cover, and you can see how the bumper cover works. It uh, lays down flat like this, or you can stand it straight up and down like that. And then you got the arms right here on the bumper cover, which actually clip to the end of the bumper cover, so when you're moving that bumper cover around, it won't fall off and it'll stay in place. So when you get your brand new bumper cover, you want to be very, very careful unpacking it. And as you can see, this bumper cover is packed very, very well, and I'm going to show you why when I can get it out, if I can get it out here. If you look right here, I'm going to show you this. You can see that this is a multicolor bumper cover. And when I say that, I'm talking about it's got this multi grain here, which is a uh, some kind of pewter looking color. And then when we come over here, we got this, which is black. And then if you look real, real close, you can see on the bottom down here where it has a grayish color which is actually uh, the bumper primer, which is applied to these at the factory. And this is the part that we're going to be painting right here. So before we do anything, we want to make sure that our stand is free from all dust and debris. So I'm going to take a blower, and I'm going to go ahead and blow this off. And then we're going to go ahead and unpack our bumper cover, just like you're watching here, being very careful not to scratch anything. This is a very, very expensive bumper cover, and there's a lot of stuff on this bumper cover that doesn't get painted. So you want to be very careful when dealing with brand new high-end bumper covers. And then we're going to take our bumper cover just like this, and we're going to meticulously hook it on to our bumper stand so we can get it in place just like that. And if you look real close, you can see that where we have it is basically a good position where we're going to work on it and possibly paint it as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get out some nice, high-quality automotive uh, tape, okay, paint and body tape. You don't want to use cheap, inexpensive tape. You want to use a tape that is designed for automotive use. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around this edge right here and we're going to tape that off around the edge so when we're sanding this down to prep it up for paint, we won't scuff or scratch the black part or the pewter area of our bumper cover. And all this is is an outline tape to protect the part that we're not painting. Um, when we get done with this, we'll end up taping everything off professionally all right, to cover it all and that's what's really the pain in the butt on these type, particular type of bumper covers is when they come to you in two-tone lingo like we're watching right here it's basically a lot of work so you really got to know and watch what you're doing once we got the tape on the bumper that we're splitting off the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start sanding this and prepping it for paint. Now, I'm going to caution you and warn you right now that a lot of people think that you need to wet sand this. If you use the wrong grit of wet sandpaper, 
and I'm talking like 400, possibly 600, what's going to happen is you're going to scratch that surface and it's going to be full of scratches instead of sanding it properly. Even though it's got primer on it, this is a very, very thin coat of factory primer and what happens is 400 and 600 wet will scratch the plastic and then you will have to reprime that and paint it. So you don't want to do that. What I do to make it nice and fast and easy and the reason I'm going to tell you this is because for several reasons. One of the main reasons is if you wet sand this bumper cover you're going to get water all over this plastic that you're not going to paint and then you're going to have to let it dry and you're going to have to make sure that it's all detailed and cleaned and everything else before you install the bumper. But if you use dry sandpaper like you're looking at right here, all right, you can blow that off and it's a lot easier to clean and it's a lot easier to make sure that you're going to get a high quality paint job. Now another thing I got here is a flex block. One side of that block is soft, softer than the other side. So we're going to use the softer side so we can get a nice contour sand job when we start sanding this. And the paper that I'm using, I'm using a DA paper. All right, this is a stick on DA paper, and this is 320. Now I can use uh, a stick on file paper 320, but I like to use this due to the fact that we can go ahead and use the edge of the block right here, and then we got this other side to use, and it also stays on the block a lot better using the DA paper than it does the file paper. And then all you got to do is just lightly scuff it down. That's it. I'm not using any pressure and I'm just barely sanding it. All I'm doing is scuffing that surface up so paint will stick to it. That is it. That's all I'm doing here. This little sand job should take less than 10 minutes. Now another thing about dry sanding I want to show you is your sandpaper will uh, gum up and it will build up with the dry primer that you're putting on there so you want to keep that paper clean. Make sure that that paper is clean all the time because what happens if your sandpaper builds up with uh, dry dust you'll start getting deep scratches on it. The next thing I do once I get all the big areas I take my sandpaper and I'm still using the same sandpaper and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in all these openings and crevices. And I'm going to be very careful not to sand any of the black parts on here. And all you want to do is lightly scuff it up. We're not sanding hard. This is not 2K primer. This is just a primer that is a sealer slash type primer that's a paint ready surface. All we're doing is getting it prepped up. You want to make sure everything is scuffed down and prepped properly. If you don't sand somewhere and you paint over it, it's going to have a situation where you're going to have a problem where the paint will start peeling off. So it's very important. Alright, now that we got our bumper cover completely sanded and prepped for paint, the next thing we got to do is we have got to tape that bumper cover off so we don't get any paint onto the parts that aren't painted. Uh, this is where it can get a little bit tricky and um, if you look at my hand right here, one of the tools that I have is called an Exacto knife. This is going to help us out to make sure that we tape that bumper cover off properly and we don't overlap our tape in the wrong places or or get it where it's supposed to be painted and then when we pull it off there's like a little strip where the tape hit it and we didn't paint it. So we don't want to have to touch this thing up with a brush high end bumper cover here. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to start taping off all the black plastic until we're completely done and then we'll uh, turn the bumper cover over and then we'll tape off all of the uh, grill parts and anywhere that air can get through. So overspray when we paint it won't go down under the bumper and ruin the black plastic or the pewter uh, painted areas. 
So on this particular piece right here, you're looking at it and you're probably asking yourself, why don't I just pop this piece off of here? Um, this piece is not removable. This piece is actually molded to the bumper cover at the factory and you cannot remove this piece out of here. Um, that's one of the gimmicks that they do the catch-22 on you and say, well, I'm sorry you broke that one piece there, but you got to buy the whole bumper cover to replace it. And like I said, this bumper cover that we're working on is over $1,000. So be careful and don't think or attempt that you're going to remove this to make the job easier because all you're going to do is ruin the bumper, bumper cover and then have to buy another one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some inch and a half tape and we're going to start outlining the uh, painted area where we're going to be painting. And once again, this is where it gets a little tricky, is putting this tape on here and doing the proper job. So you want to make sure that you get in there nice and tight in the corners and watch very carefully as you're doing it. You don't want the tape to touch any of the area where there's going to be paint. Now I will mention in this corner right here that we're working on there's a piece of black plastic trim that goes down inside here which actually covers this uh, corner. You can see where it snaps in right here and it kind of goes all the way around this opening I believe. So we should be okay. take our paper and then we're just going to go ahead and follow that tape line just like this and stay on top of the tape and once again if you sanded through this tape or you came to a conclusion that you didn't do a good tape job on that from the beginning pull that tape off and uh, apply a new outline tape on it You can see right here where I've outlined this um, cover, so I still got to go back and cover that with two inch tape. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this real quick while I'm working on it. Anywhere that you have your paper overlapped, Make sure to take your two inch tape and tape that seam up. You don't want to leave that open. You want to go ahead and take an old blanket or some type of material um, due to the fact that this is a painted surface and we don't want to actually scratch it. So we're going to try to cover up the raw metal area here so we don't scratch our surface that we're going to be painting because that's just going to give us more work. So we're going to take our bumper and then we'll go ahead and flip our bumper cover over like this. And then now that our bumper cover is flipped over, we're going to go ahead and fold all our tape in and we're not done there. Let me go ahead and get all this folded in. I had to run over and get some more tape I ran out and you don't want to run out of tape on a job like this especially when you're a one-man operation like my friend Pete is. And if you notice what I'm doing here I'm folding the paper back away from these holes and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to take my two inch tape and I want to cover those holes up. I don't want to have that where it's going to have air or overspray you might say, bleeding into the uh, bumper cover itself. And then if we look right here, you can see the same situation that we have as our opening there. We're going to wrap our paper around here, just like this, and take that off. And another thing is, look at these holes I found, I'm going to cover any holes. Okay. Anything on the back side where overspray is going to get into, you want to be able to cover. So this is actually a good bumper to actually show everybody out there how to do this because there's a lot of 
intricate stuff going on here with this thing. And uh, a lot of stuff here that you can learn from watching these videos over here at DIY Auto School. Pay attention, watch, listen, and learn, and you're going to get this thing done right. All right, now that we got the bumper all taped off and um, block sanded and ready for us to prep up and paint, let's go in the paint booth and go to the next procedure. Okay, so we're inside the paint booth. I don't know where you would paint your bumper, probably in your garage at home. Make sure you have a nice, clean environment. If you do it outside, make sure that the wind's not blowing heavy and you're doing it in a area where there's not a lot of dirt or trash blowing in the air. The next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and prep our bumper to apply the paint. Now, most common sense would tell you that we're gonna use wax and grease remover on that, but you do not use wax and grease remover on a bumper cover. I'm gonna say that again. Do not use wax and grease remover on a bumper cover. What you do wanna use is good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. This is what's gonna clean that plastic. This is what's gonna purify it so the paint and the, the clears and everything else that you're going to put on your bumper is going to stick and stay on there for good. Do not use wax and grease remover on your bumper covers. What you want to use is good old fashioned, cheap, inexpensive, 69 cent bottle alcohol, rubbing alcohol. So we're going to go ahead and take a nice clean white ball. This is an automotive paint and body shop white ball, um, not a mechanics white ball. And we're going to go ahead and wipe this down thoroughly just like you see me doing. You want to get it saturated nice and wet because you want it to get into the pores and you want it to clean 100% thoroughly to evaporate any oils or additives or anything that might be purified into the bumper cover itself. Very important. And you can see by using a nice clean white ball and rubbing, and rubbing alcohol really cleans it off good. So all it takes is a one white deal. You don't have to wipe over it, wipe over it. Just a nice, easy wipe down to get everything clean and ready for paint. And now what we got is a nice clean bumper that's ready to go ahead and put our adhesive promoter. That's what we're going to use. We're not putting the paint on yet. We're going to use an item called adhesive promoter. Let me go get that. I'm going to show you what we're talking about. All right, what we got here, we got is a quart can of adhesive promoter. Now what this is used for, this is used to make the paint stick. It's a flexible additive and it's paint ready in five minutes. All right, very cheap, very inexpensive. I want to go ahead and mention something else. If you notice, I'm not putting any epoxy primer on this. We don't need to put epoxy primer on the factory primer. All right, if you don't bust through the primer and you do it like I've been showing you how to do it, you don't have to do all that. If you get a bumper cover that's solid black and doesn't have any primer on it at all, because they do have primer that's black primer, but if you happen to get a bumper cover, that does not have primer on it, then you will have to use 1500 or 400, scuff that down, I'm sorry, 800, not four. Uh, scotch bright it down, scuff it down, whatever you gotta do, and then you'll have to apply a coat of uh, epoxy primer sealer to that bumper before you apply your paint. But before you apply anything, whether it's epoxy primer or it's paint or clear, you always wanna use this item right here, adhesive promoter. Um, this is going to make sure that the job is guaranteed it's going to come out perfect. And you won't have any bleed backs, you won't have any type of uh, peeling later down the line. And if you bump into something, it's going to make the paint flexible where the paint will bend and move with the bumper cover itself. So, very important item right here that I'm showing you, the adhesive promoter. And the other important uh, tech tip that we're showing you in this video is using that rubbing alcohol on your bumper cover. When you apply your adhesion promoter, you want to go ahead and apply that at about 35 PSI. You're going to go real fast, real quick. All it takes is a tack coat and we're done. And that's it. Bam. It's
it's a done situation. We have now added our adhesive promoter. We'll let that dry for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. When we come back, we're going to look at our paint. We're going to apply our paint and get our clear coat on to, yes, the bumper cover. All right, now that we got our bumper completely prepped up, 100% ready for paint, let's check out the paint we're going to use and the clear to go ahead and finish this job. Okay, so what we got here is this is actually the color of the bumper itself. This is a, a like a pearl white. It's not a tri-stage. It's a base coat, clear coat, but it gives it a pearl white effect. And because it is white, and I already had some paint left over because this is actually the third time I fixed this car for this girl or lady, um, I've kept the paint and we still got enough here to paint the bumper. Now I want you to pay attention to the brand I'm using here. This is a very expensive brand. When you're doing a high-end vehicle, you should use the expensive brands because the paint is going to match a lot better. If you're painting a low-end car like a Saturn or possibly a Ford Taurus, you know, you're on your own and just get what you think is going to work because the color ain't going to match anyway. But on this high-end, newer vehicle, you want to use the top quality paint supplies due to the fact that it will match. We are not blending. And I'm going to say that again. We are not going to blend any paint into the vehicle to match on this. We are painting the bumper only, so it's very important that if you're not going to blend into your fenders the paint, blend the paint in there so everything matches, you got to use the top quality paint supplies. Now before we go ahead and apply the color of her vehicle on that bumper cover, what I'm going to do, since this bumper is white, I got some leftover white paint right here and you can see this is base coat, base clear urethane. And what I'm going to do is I will put a coat of this white on there first to cover the black so I use less coats of the expensive paint. That's a tech tip and trick right there that's going to save you a lot of money. You can use this paint right here. This is just a solid base white. All right. And if we were going to paint it red, then I would find some kind of red. Like, you know, maybe if I had some of this left over, we'd put a coat of this on it and then put the color of the vehicle on top of that. That's going to save you a lot of money, a lot of time by using the leftover paint that you got, or possibly you can purchase some um, uh, mixed match paint over at the paint store. They always got it on the shelf there, uh, you know, that somebody mix matched and they want to get rid of it for a couple dollars. Always a good idea right here. This is a tech tip number three is saving paint supplies. Um, if I had to paint that bumper cover and I didn't have this white, I'd have to buy another pint of this paint and this pint is $118 a pint. So uh, we got about a half a pint here and about, I would say, one third here. So when I mix that together, that should be enough to cover to make that bumper uh, look like it's supposed to. Now the clear that we're going to use on this is called Quick Dry Clear. Now all manufacturers make this clear. Depending on what manufacturer you like or what you use, you can ask them if they got Quick Cure Clear. Now what this clear does, this actually dries within one hour. And you can see by the temperature, it is 55, 57 degrees outside right now where we're at. I have my paint booth running, which is sucking in the air through the side and then back into the paint booth. And since we're only gonna paint partial fascia of that bumper cover, we're gonna go ahead and use the Quick Dry Clear because you only wait five to ten minutes in between coats and it only takes two coats of clear to cover. Very quick, very fast, very efficient stuff right here. And this is the stuff you want to use to get that bumper cover dry, even Steven, and looking high gloss. Now I would like to add that the Quick Cure Clear is not in no way whatsoever designed to paint a whole car. The biggest thing that you can paint with that thing is probably a bumper cover or possibly a fender. That's it. It is not designed to paint a whole car or maybe the whole side of a car. By the time you start painting up here and then you work your way down to here, all right, the clear is already drying and it's just not a good idea, so I do not recommend it. This is only for bumper covers possibly a front fender, uh, maybe if you had to blend it, a little paint into a door and then clear coat the door. It's just single panel, quick cure clear, 
to get you in and out and down the road. Let's get in the paint booth. Let's start applying our paint. I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you learned something from it. I hope tech tips that I have given you have nurtured the situation and given you the ability to say, yes, I can do it. I can do it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, painting bumper covers and getting them down the road and hopefully making a little bit of profit money. We'll see you later. Okay, we just got the bumper cover installed on the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it, see what's going on, and hopefully it turned out all right. Um, now, the vehicle that we actually put the bumper cover on is a Range Rover Evogue. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. Um, this bumper cover was hell putting on. We literally had to take the wheels off the car. We had to take the inner fender wells off the car. It was an all-day job replacing this bumper cover. But I want to show you what it looks like. Now, you saw the way that I repaired this bumper cover and I fixed it, or should I say painted it? I didn't really repair it. I repaired the vehicle. Um, very simple, very easy, do-it-yourself-at-home situation. And if it comes to this car right here, or something like this car, you're going to have hell putting a bumper cover on. But let's go ahead and look at it and see how it came out. So if you look right there, there's our bumper cover. It is installed on the vehicle. We did not blend any paint into the fenders. That was not part of the deal. And this is what you got when you don't blend. You're going to see there's just a little shade of difference in white there. One's a little darker than the other. That means that uh, we did paint the bumper cover. It is done. It's a done deal. And we have now completed the job of replacing our bumper cover in matters of, what can I say, a couple days at home by ourselves, doing it right, doing it right. Because if you're not doing it right, 
you know the old saying that my friend Pete says, you definitely ain't doing it at all. So the car's done. It came out beautiful. I'm happy with the job. And very, very intense putting this bumper cover on. But it's a done deal. We used hand tools, minor tools. We uh, went through the procedure of what it takes to paint it and it came out beautiful so you can do this job trust me you can do this at home it's not that big of a deal all it takes is a little bit of knowledge a little bit of saying i can do it a positive attitude and get her done and do it right this is pete my friend pete your friend pete showing you and telling you that doing jobs in life doesn't matter what you do only takes a little bit of knowledge takes a little bit of that thing we call listening and watching or should I say watching listening and learning and it takes the will of saying I can do it because that's what it's all about is just jumping into the job and doing it um, we went ahead and used some special clear on this job I showed you that and we also went ahead and used the high quality paint so actually glad that job's done. That was a freaking nightmare. See you later.